One fateful January morning during freshman year, I awoke with a burning question on my mind. Why haven't I ever eaten an insect? It was, admittedly, a bizarre craving, but the thought bugged me all day. So I texted my mom, can I get some crickets to eat? I was met with silence, so I followed up with, is that a no? To which she replied, crickets? Replete with an emoji to make sure we were on the same page. I said, yes, and she, still bewildered, asked, like, in a cereal bar? And I said, like crickets, like in a jar. And then she said, can we talk? Once she made sure I hadn't lost my mind, she ordered me a little jar of crickets, and I awaited their arrival eagerly. When I finally received the package ready for pickup email, I ran all the way to the mailroom and back to St. Monica Hall to crack them open and share them with friends. They were admittedly a little surprised at first, but almost everyone I offered them to tried one, and they made great snacks. I wasn't at all surprised that bugs had amazed me yet again. After all, I've always loved insects. Back in my Science Olympiad Prime, I competed in entomology, an enthralling test about insects, and brought home regional gold not once, but twice. Big day for me, as you can see. I know the Latin names for all the orders of insects. I still scoop up lanternflies and praying mantises to this day. I even own a field guide to the insects of North America. I brought it with me for good luck. And if you think I'm crazy, now is a great time to tell you that there is a Villanovan willingly dating me. All jokes aside, I'm here today to make the case for entomophagy. Entomophagy, derived from the Greek words entomon, meaning insect, and phagin, meaning to eat, refers to the practice of eating insects. At first, this was going to be a cut and dry talk about eating insects. It would have sounded something like, you should try crickets, they're really good for you, lots of fiber. And everyone would have left here like, was it just me? Or was the bug girl super weird? So instead of calorie counting insects, I'm going to give you some critical ways bugs can make us better humans, because I think they can do a lot more than just give us our daily helping of protein. Before we can jump into that, though, we need to address some big questions. Question one, how long have people been eating insects? Actually, since prehistoric times. Back when we were still hunter-gatherers, we watched animals forage for protein-filled insects, and we did the same, eating beetles, locusts, grasshoppers, termites, and even dragonflies. We even have cave paintings from tens of thousands of years ago depicting humans eating insects. Isn't that incredible? Okay, question two. Do people still eat bugs today, besides on Survivor? Yes, despite entomophagy dying down once we started growing crops and raising livestock, insects are still consumed by over two billion people in over 80% of the countries around the globe. Despite being taboo in North America and Europe, entomophagy is a common practice in Central and South America, Africa, Asia, and even Australia. It even serves as a powerful tool for meeting the food needs of developing nations. Think for a moment how easy it is to raise crickets as opposed to raising cows. Crickets take up practically no space, they can sustain themselves off of composting scraps and a little bit of water, and they reproduce really quickly, which means you can end up with a ton of food quickly and for a low cost. This can serve as a powerful tool for meeting the food needs of developing nations and countries with increased populations. According to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, there are over 1,900 edible species, and we're bound to add a lot more to that list as we keep exploring. Not to mention, insects can be cooked all sorts of different ways, from dried to fried to boiled to baked. Okay, question three. Are insects safe to eat? 
Yes, the blanching and cooking process makes them totally safe. Not to mention, insects pose a much lower risk of infecting us with zoonotic diseases than other forms of livestock. You may be thinking, are you sure they're safe? I'm positive. These are grasshoppers. See? Perfectly fine. If you don't want to start with whole insects, you can always start small with insect powders, pastes, and flours that can be added to other dishes. If you're still reluctant, it may help to know that you've probably eaten insects before. If you've ever had a bar of chocolate or a spoonful of peanut butter, you've likely eaten insects. Don't shoot the messenger, but FDA regulations permit 3.5 ounces of insect fragments in every 100 grams of both chocolate and peanut butter. Insect fragments are natural defects and impossible to remove completely. So you've already eaten insects safely, although unintentionally. Okay, question four. Are insects good for you? Yes, they are, after all, packed with protein and fiber, and they contain essential micronutrients like vitamins and minerals. Insects can contain up to 80% protein, making them a great substitute for other forms of livestock. Insects even surpass other meats in certain aspects. They contain more mineral iron and less fat than beef. Okay, question five. So if entomophagy is such a widespread practice, why don't we do it here in the US? Well, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, it's purely cultural. The origins of disgust are rooted in culture. So if you grimaced when you first heard me say the phrase eating insects, it's because doing so is not a common practice here in the West. We associate insects with sensations such as gross, dirty, and crunchy. So admittedly, I am fighting a bit of an uphill battle here. But our cultural norms shift all the time. Lobster, a quasi-insect of the sea, was such a cheap and copious food from the colonial era onwards that prisoners who ate it every night were considered to be facing a cruel and unusual punishment. Its transformation into a delicacy makes me confident that this is a change we could feasibly make, as our cultural norms shift all the time. So, with our newfound knowledge of how powerful of a tool insects can be, let's move into the surprising things they can do for us. First, they can make us more sustainable consumers. Compared to all other forms of livestock, insects are less of a strain on the environment and cut down on resource consumption. Remember the contrast I drew earlier between raising crickets and raising cows? Let's see how it holds up. Crickets need a fraction of the land, food, and water that cows need. They also utilize their feed incredibly efficiently, with two kilograms of feed producing nine kilograms of insects as opposed to just one kilogram of beef. Not to mention the sustainability generated by the type of feed given to the insects. While cattle farmers need to utilize additional resources such as land and water to grow grain for the cows, Crickets can be sustained largely off of agricultural waste we already have. By raising insects, we can cut down on resource consumption and efficiently utilize our waste. Moving on to water, producing a kilogram of crickets requires about 2,000 liters of water. Producing the same amount of beef? Over 120,000 liters of water. The numbers speak for themselves. Taking a quick look at greenhouse gas emissions, there are only a handful of edible insects that produce methane as a byproduct, whereas cattle produce a ton of greenhouse gas. In fact, the production of a single kilogram of beef is near equivalent to the emissions produced by a 250 kilometer drive. That's about two pounds for 155 miles if you're trying to convert in your head. A cultural shift to include insects in our diet would greatly reduce the carbon emissions caused by raising livestock, slowing the increase in global temperature caused by climate change. Making this shift even partially would certainly require some time and convincing, but entomophagy is undeniably a better move for us and our planet looking forward. The Food and Agriculture Organization points to insects as prime candidates as both food staples and supplements, 
Insects hold the power to bring about an environmentally sustainable food system. A win-win. Insects are only the beginning to being more environmentally conscious in everything we do. One of the more beautiful things I believe insects have the capacity to do for us, though, is to make us more interconnected and knowledgeable regarding each other's cultures. I have learned so much more about dietary customs all around the world. I had no idea that in Cambodia, tarantulas are captured, fried, and sold at the marketplace. In southern Africa, the Mopani worm is a dietary staple. It can be cooked in a hot chili sauce. In Mexico, grasshoppers, or chapulines, are toasted and seasoned. Locusts are fried in Thailand. Through recipes and YouTube videos, I became acquainted with different dishes, customs, languages, and ways of life. I have learned so much more about different bug dishes around the world, and there are so many I want to try. My roommates are going to be thrilled when my fried tarantulas arrive in the mail. Through a strange door, I came to a greater understanding and appreciation of cultures that are not my own. And I think we need that more than ever right now. It is only by putting in the time and effort to genuinely learn about other cultures that we will stop being hindered by our ignorance. Cultivating this understanding is a sign, a clear indication of love and respect for the other. Maybe when you first heard me say the phrase, eating insects, you were taken aback. But now that you know how integral they are to some cultures, you're more accepting of the idea, even if you don't feel particularly compelled to try them yourself. Yet, if you've already undergone that little change, that's wonderful. Learning about entomophagy is just a tiny window into a world of knowledge that will only become accessible to us if we open the door. So do yourself a favor and genuinely educate yourself regarding aspects of other cultures, because that is how we eradicate misconceptions, stereotypes, and hatreds. You have a wealth of resources at your fingertips. Read an article, watch a video. It will do nothing but make you a more compassionate person, an understanding neighbor who is capable of loving those around you properly. The type of person our world needs most. So the next time you're presented with a plate of crickets, or at the very least, cricket flour cookies, do yourself a favor and say yes. Thank you.